Deductive and inductive arguments. Now that you're familiar with the basic structure of arguments, where there are always one or more premises and a conclusion, let's look more closely at different types of arguments. Remember, making an argument is all about staking out a position on a specific problem or issue. Now think about all the different types of problems one could confront. There are problems in everyday life. Where should we eat dinner? Which house should we buy? Which school is better for my kids? There are problems that college students like you deal with. How many classes should I take next semester? What should I major in? Should I get an internship or study abroad? There are problems in business. Do we need to hire another employee? What database software should we use? How should we design this marketing campaign? And there are political problems. What's the best income tax structure? And what should our energy policy be? As people make arguments to resolve these and many more issues, they may offer many different types of premises in defense of their position. We're going to dig deeper into two kinds of arguments, deductive arguments and inductive arguments. To get started, consider the following two examples. In each case, there's a question or problem to be resolved, and examples of possible premises that could be offered as part of an argument to address that question. In the first example, the problem is that you and some friends are trying to decide where you should go for dinner the Red Iguana, or Café Trang. There are two premises. One, Red Iguana is open until 10 p.m., and Café Trang is only open until 9. And two, the Red Iguana has the best Mexican food in the area. In another example, the problem is trying to answer the question, how many classes should I take next semester? Again, there are two premises. One, tuition for 12 credit hours will cost $3,100. Tuition for 15 credit hours will cost $3,700. And two, it's better to take more classes every semester so that you can get done faster. In both examples, the first premise offered was a fact that can be proven to be true or false. You can look up the hours for each restaurant or the tuition cost for different numbers of credit hours. However, the second premise offered was an opinion that cannot be proven to be true or false. People may disagree on whether the red iguana has the best Mexican food, or if it's the best idea to take a lot of classes to finish your degree more quickly. Facts and opinions have different relationships with the conclusions that are drawn, and result in different types of arguments. For example, let's say it's currently 9.05 p.m. when your friend asks, should we eat at the red iguana or Café Trang? You reply, well, Café Trang closed at 9, but the red iguana is open until 10 so we need to go to the red iguana. If you're correct, if the facts are true, then your conclusion has to be true. Your only option is red iguana, an argument in which the conclusion necessarily follows the premises. If the premises are true, then the conclusion is also true. This is a deductive argument. On the other hand, what if it's only 8 p.m.? Both restaurants are still open and available. When your friend asks which one you should choose, you reply, Well, Red Iguana has the best Mexican food in the area. Café Trang is okay, but it's not that great. So we should go to the Red Iguana. In this case, the decision to go to the Red Iguana cannot be said to be true. The conclusion does not logically follow from the premise. Just because you think the Red Iguana has better food does not mean you or your friend must choose it you have simply tried to build a case for why it's the better option. An argument in which acceptance of the conclusion depends on the strength of the premises, in which the premises do not prove but merely support the conclusion, is an inductive argument. Deductive arguments. Remember a deductive argument is one in which the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. If the premises are true, the conclusion is true. What if you don't like the conclusion? If, say, you really wanted to go to Café Trang? Well, it's too bad the premises don't support that conclusion. In our example, if the restaurant is indeed closed, you're out of luck. The conclusion that you should go to the Red Iguana in some ways states the obvious. If you only have two options, and one of those options is closed, the premises of the argument, then it really goes without saying that you must go to the other one. It doesn't matter if you don't like the conclusion. Say, for example, that you really wanted to go to Café Trang instead. Unless you can disprove one of the premises of the argument. 
you have no choice but to accept the conclusion. Anytime you are dealing with deductive arguments, whether you're evaluating an argument someone else has made or constructing your own argument, you shouldn't start with the conclusion. When you evaluate someone else's argument, you must avoid jumping to the conclusion right away and deciding, without consideration of the argument as a whole, whether you agree with it or not. Similarly, when you make your own argument, you must avoid picking out your conclusion ahead of time and then finding ways to justify it. Instead, you need to start by examining or uncovering the premises, reasons and evidence, then follow where those premises lead. What logical conclusions can you draw from the evidence? So when you evaluate a deductive argument, you need to ask two questions. One, are the premises true? And two, is the form of the argument valid? If the answer to both questions is yes, then you have a sound argument. The first question is fairly simple, although it does not mean that it will always be easy to answer. Premises in deductive arguments are facts that can, at least in theory, be proven true or false. They refer to condition or states of things. Is the restaurant closed, for example? In this case, it's pretty easy to find out if that premise is actually true or not. You could drive to the restaurant and find out. The second question, whether the argument is valid or not, refers to the logical structure. An argument is valid if it's not possible for the premise to be true and the conclusion to be false. In our example, the premise tells us that there are two restaurants to choose from and one of them is closed. The conclusion, then, is that we must go to the other, open, restaurant. If that premise is true, then it is not possible for the conclusion to be wrong. It must be true as well. Inductive arguments. As you heard, an inductive argument is one in which the conclusion is supported, but not proven, to a greater or lesser degree by the premises. The conclusion goes beyond the premises. The conclusion that you should go to Red Iguana is not logically implied by the statement that it has the best Mexican food. Maybe your friend doesn't really feel like eating Mexican food. In that case, he could offer a counterargument with reasons why you should go to Trang instead. In the case of inductive arguments, the evaluation process has to be different than deductive arguments. You cannot necessarily prove or disprove the premises, nor can you determine if the premises lead inevitably to the conclusion or not. Instead, you must ask the following questions. One, are the premises true or at least acceptable? Two, are they relevant to the issue at hand? And three, are the premises compelling enough, students of critical thinking call this sufficient, to justify the conclusion? Your answers to these three questions will help you evaluate how strong or weak the argument is. So let's take a closer look at these questions. First, with inductive arguments, you may find premises that are not easily assessed as true or false. Rather than facts, you will often have matters of opinion. The assertion that the red iguana has the best Mexican food is a matter of opinion over which people may disagree. In evaluating this argument, you need to consider whether this premise is acceptable. Can you accept it as reasonable? In this case, you might look at restaurant reviews or published lists of best of Salt Lake City. You might poll your friends to see how many people agree with this opinion. Second, you need to decide whether that premise in this case, the opinion that the red iguana has the best Mexican food is relevant. That is, is the premise related to the issue at hand? Here, it does seem relevant to consider the reputation of a restaurant when deciding where to eat. However, if it's said that we should go to the red iguana because it has the nicest parking lot, you might question whether that reason is really relevant to deciding where to eat. Finally, you need to consider whether the premise is sufficient to justify the conclusion. Is the opinion that the red iguana has the best Mexican food really enough to base the decision on? Are there other things you might want to consider? For example, how long is the wait for a table? How good is the service? Evaluation of inductive arguments falls into a range from weaker to stronger. If you determine that the premise is highly acceptable, is relevant to the issue at hand, and is enough of a reason to base your decision on, 
then you would conclude that the argument is fairly strong. If you find that the premise is highly acceptable and it is relevant, but it's not really sufficient enough to make a decision based on that premise alone, then you might say the argument is so-so, not weak, but not strong enough. You could improve the argument by offering more premises to support it. Yeah, the food's great and so is the service. Plus, I just called and they said we could get a table in 10 minutes. Or alternatively, you might offer a counter-argument. Sure, the food's good, but their service is awful and there's always a really long wait. As you may have figured out, inductive arguments can take on many different forms. Generalizations are where arguments involve making a general claim based on limited or specific evidence. For example, drawing conclusions about the opinion of the nation as a whole based on public opinion polls of some smaller number of people. Analogies are similar to generalizations in that they involve proposed similarities. When making an analogy, you draw conclusions about one situation based on what you know about another, allegedly similar situation. General principles are the opposite of generalizations. These arguments involve applying general principles, for example, qualities a group of people are assumed to have, to a specific case, an individual member of that group. Causal reasoning arguments offer what is determined to be the best possible explanation for why something has happened. They offer an argument that one thing necessarily led to another happening. Now you should have some idea of what deductive and inductive arguments are, and how they differ. Many of the topics introduced here will be discussed in more detail later. You will learn more about how to evaluate the truth and acceptability of premises, as well as how to assess the relevance and sufficiency of those premises. You will also learn how to use causal reasoning to both develop and assess arguments.